Okay. Uh, we're now going to talk about the bond indenture and some of the items in a bond indenture. And like I said in the previous video, we're not talking about everything that's in a bond indenture. And bond indentures can go on for hundreds of pages, so we're not going to do hundreds of pages, but we're going to talk about some of the main items and specifically the items that drive the risk and the return of the bond, things that might define the cash flows of the bond, and uh, indicate to us maybe the underlying risk of, uh, of, of purchasing the bond. Now, in a bond indenture, there are certain common elements that you, that you see. One thing you see is something called face value. Now, all bonds uh, have a face value of some sort or another. And with bonds now, face value is a multiple of $1,000. So, uh, probably most bonds have a face value of $1,000. But a $5,000, $10,000, $100,000 million dollar face value, that's not unusual. That's, uh, that's actually fairly common. But uh, they're multiples of $1,000 to face value bond. And you'll learn a little later on, and I'll tell you now. But uh, the face value of the bond defines the lump sum cash flow you get at the end of the life of the bond. You're about to find out that bonds have two kinds of cash flows now. They have a lump sum cash flow and there's an annuity. Now, the lump sum cash flow of a bond, again, is the face value of the bond. And that's the lump sum cash flow you'll get at the end of the life of the bond. So at the end of the life of this bond, the end of the, end of the contract, the end of the loan, if you want, uh, indeed, you're going to get $1,000. Okay? That's what this tells us. Another common element of bond indenture now is the stated return on the bond often referred to as the coupon return. Now technically, stated return is correct. Coupon return, you hear that almost as often, but technically now it's called the stated return. In finance now, interest rates, growth rates, inflation rates, rates of return are always stated on an annual basis. So when we say 9%, now we're talking about 9% per year, not 9% a month or 9% every six months, but 9% per year. These are annualized uh, interest rates. You'll also find something in a bond as to the timing of the payments. In Europe, the tradition is to pay interest on bonds annually. You get one payment a year. In the United States, the tradition is to pay interest semi-annually. That is, you get two payments a year. Now, how do you define the payments that you're going to get? Well, you take the stated return of the bond and you multiply it by the face value of the bond. And indeed, you'll find out as we go through here, the only thing you ever do with the stated return on the bond is you multiply it by the face value. If you take 9% of $1,000, 0.09 times 1,000, you come up with $90. That's $90 per year that you'll get in interest. If this is an American bond, you're not going to get a pay one payment of $90. You'll get two payments of $45 every year. So every six months, you'll get $45 in interest. Uh, if this was a European bond or a bond that simply paid interest annually, again, you would get $90 a year. So the stated return times the face value tells you the total interest in dollars that you'll get over the course of a year. The maturity date. Now, on a bond, in a real bond indenture now, what, you, what you'll have is a, a specific date. In other words, uh, June 15th, 2018. On June 15th, 2018, that's when the maturity is on the, on the, on the bond. That is, that's the end of the loan. And it's on that date that you would get the thousand dollars they send it to you. Okay? But that's called the maturity date. In classes like we're having, in textbooks and things like that, we don't usually give you a, a date specific. We tell you something like this. That is, this is a 10-year bond. Technically, what we're telling you is that there's 10 years remaining on the life of the bond. So this could have been a 15-year bond originally but five years have gone by and there's 10 years left on the life of the bond. That's maturity date. Again, in practice now, this is date specific 
and you have to figure out how long it is from now until then. We just simplify this process a little bit in, in, in classes, on exams, and things like that. We're going to tell you, when we tell you it's a 10-year bond, we mean there's 10 years left on the life of the bond, 10 years to mature. Another thing that's very important in a bond indenture now is who's the trustee of the bond? Now, the Trust Indenture Act of 1940 says that companies that issue bonds with a cumulative face value of $3 million or more, they have to pay for and have a trustee on the bond. Now, the trustee, we kind of talk about trustees like they're an individual, like they're a person. In fact, the trustee is usually a bank or an institution of some sort. And what their job is now is to make sure that all the provisions in the bond indenture are carried out. That is, that the company does everything it's supposed to do, and that we, the bondholders, do everything we're supposed to do. Companies, when they pay interest on their bonds, they don't really send the interest directly to the bondholders. What they actually do is they send the money to the trustee. That's how the trustee makes sure that the company's paying the interest on its debt. It's the trustee who will then send us the interest that we're owed on the bond. So again, this is called a trustee, and their job is to make sure that all the provisions of the indenture are carried out. Again, the company does everything it's supposed to do. The bond investors, the bondholders do everything they're supposed to do. If the company fails to pay the interest on its debt, not paying your interest on your debt now, that's a technical definition of bankruptcy. We, the bondholders, wouldn't go to the courthouse and put the company in bankruptcy. The trustee would do that. So the trustee's job is to run the bond indenture, run the bond, run the contract if you want. But this is a very important person in a bond issuance. And uh, again, I call it a person. It's actually an institution of some sort. But the trustee is an important entity uh, in that they make sure that everything gets done properly.